Yo, what up? Your boy Bowie here. And uh, I'm here to let y'all know that these motherfuckers is tripping. Who motherfuckers am I talking about? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is about that time for us to, uh, for the kids to go back to school in Florida. It is, uh, August 5th, 2022, the Friday, and on Monday is the first day of student orientation, district-wide. Um, Tuesday is the second day, and then the following Wednesday, uh, the kids will officially start their first day of school. That would be the 10th. Yeah, but uh, of course, I went back to school uh, before that. My first day was officially the 3rd of August, which was a Wednesday. And uh, the moment I got onto the goddamn campus and went to my room, I knew these motherfuckers was tripping. For starters, I opened up my door to my classroom, and uh, my room is disheveled. Now, mind you, before we leave for the year, we have to clean up our rooms, have an administrator walk in and inspect it, and, and you know, make sure it's not left fucked up before we leave for the summer. You know, so everything was in order. They had polished our floors and all that good stuff. And my room was especially done because we actually moved into our... Well, I moved into my new classroom uh, last year. I had been in my previous room for five years. And uh, they moved us. And, uh, you know, it was it was cool. I like the new room. I have a, an office now, which is crazy. Bigger windows. It's a larger space. You know, I dig it. Made a lot of good memories in my other room, but I feel like I'm going to make better memory. Well, not better memories, but, you know, more memories in this new one. You know, no big deal. But it was clean before I left for the school year is my point. Of course, when I get up in there, my desk is all fucked up. My uh, ports to Ethernet and all that stuff, those are all fucked up. And the reason why is because, um, I guess, well, some of, not, it's not the district actually, it's the school. We were getting a new PA system. And, uh, all the new equipment was installed in other parts of the campus, but not in our rooms in the area where I'm at. And so me and all the classrooms in my region, which are, you know, actually it's more than that. I was going to say it was three of us, but really it's five because it's my three neighbors and then my other two down the hall. All of our rooms are being redone in this way. And they all look toe up. You know, we have, a, you know, a contractor, an outside contractor coming in, running wires, pulling ceilings, you know, ceiling tiles and shit like that. A lot of our wires are still hanging out, looking all dangerous and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, it looks mad ratchet. Um, and, uh, yeah, so... They already got my room messed up. So there's that. I'm like, alright, well. My room's messed up. No big deal. You know what I'm saying? Let me go and get my laptop. And try to get to work. Laptop, I get, I'm able to acquire the laptop okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I was able to procure my key to my room okay as well. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff was good. However, 
I go on my laptop, all my stuff is there, all my files are there. But there's no goddamn internet. <laughs> and this is particularly pernicious because um, now we sign in using our own laptops again. You know, we did this not last year, but the year before to counteract COVID. And the system worked out pretty good. But then last year, you know, everyone thought the pandemic was damn near over. So it's like, yeah, let's go back to our old system where we all go to a computer and sign in manually at the same spot. You know, I'm like, all right, well, okay, nigga, but... But now, you know, it's back to an individual sign-in system, per, you know, on individual machines, which is great. But it don't work if you don't have Wi-Fi. And even right now in my room, I still don't have Wi-Fi. This was on Wednesday. I found this out. And... Obviously, today is Friday. I don't have Wi-Fi. And come Monday, it's likely that I will not have Wi-Fi. In this room, where everything is digital, and all that. Thankfully, I had already prepared for this. And I got my, you know, phone uh, to use it as a hotspot and have my computer connected to it. So I was able to you know, do work in my room and whatnot. So I circumvented that problem. But I shouldn't have to. You know what I mean? Like, I shouldn't have to worry about that. But then when I go, uh, <laughs> I get onto my email and all that good stuff. Let's see, what did I find out first? Um,. So I get a, a, a cadre of emails, most of which do not really pertain to, pertain to me. So I, you know, ignored them. And then the ones that did pertain to me, uh, they're like, some of them are useful, others are like kind of inappropriate. Like, I got one about our See, in education, there's a bunch of damn acronyms all the goddamn time for everything. And one of those stupid acronyms is known as SAO, and that's the Student Achievement Objective. See, what happens is uh, Florida finally realized that it's kind of unfair to evaluate the entirety of a, a you know, of teacher's effectiveness purely based on uh, standardized test scores which that's true and so now we're able to sort of define our own parameters of success and we have to create something known as a student achievement objective SAO it's basically a uh, a task or activity or anything like that that you can document and show student progress in a class sounds great on paper in practice it's a lot of goddamn work and it's way too open ended and at least with the test score thing I didn't have to do shit all I had to do was keep teaching and then whatever my kids got scored you know whatever they scored on this on the test you know, I got a score according to that, and I didn't have to do no extra work. I didn't have to g gather anything. I didn't have to document anything. I didn't have to write nothing down or nothing, anything like that. It was just, you know, I just get the thing. And so, obviously, it ain't even the first day of school yet, but I get some punk-ass email from one of my administrators talking about some, here's a... Uh, a how-to on how to write a good SAO. Like, bitch, I just got here. And I ain't got no Wi-Fi. I ain't thinking about no bitch-ass SAO, so shut up. You know what I'm saying? I rolled my eyes and clicked my teeth instantly. 
So there was that. Then, I get another email talking about, oh, sign up uh, for a, a math group on Schoology. So, most of y'all don't know, but Schoology is this uh, online platform that us teachers have to use. And it's actually pretty useful, you know what I'm saying? It's a one-stop shop that the students go to to uh, receive assignments and, you know, all that good stuff. It's nice because instead of me handing them physical copies of things all the damn time, I can make PDFs of those same files or of those same assignments post them on Schoology and then the kids can access them from wherever they're at. So they don't have to have the physical papers of my assignments. But if they want the physical papers, they can log on to Schoology, go to the assignment, print it off, and then they can have the physical paper if they really, really need it. It's a, an anti-COVID measure just in case we all had to be um, quarantined or sent back home or whatever. And I had to join a math group on there, and, you know, there ain't no big deal, blah, 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 blah. I joined a math group, and right as I do it, on the front page, they talking about some, oh, yeah, we have contact day on Friday. Click here for more information. Now, what is contact day? Contact day is where they gather all the teachers in your district that teach a particular subject, they have them all go to a, a off-site location, usually it's another high school or somewhere, and they give us all the rundown on what the fuck's about to go down for the rest of the school year regarding our topic. Now, during any other time period, this would be fine, good, and dandy, but... This is the COVID era. And despite what people think or what they done heard or whatever, we are still in the midst of this COVID pandemic. It's still killing people. This virus is still mutating. Okay? We are not out of the woods yet by any stretch of the imagination. What's worse is there's not just COVID out there anymore. Now we have a new virus, uh, monkeypox, that was literally just declared a national health emergency by President Biden. The only other two diseases that share that distinction are COVID and polio. Okay? So far, monkeypox has infected approximately 19,000 people worldwide. And... A whole bunch of those cases have been in the U.S. You know, from what I remember, or, you know, at least according to current data, Florida is the state with the sixth largest number of cases of monkeypox. And this is one of those viruses that you can get it by breathing in droplets. You can get it by touching someone that has monkeypox. You know what I'm saying? Uh... And it can live on surfaces for weeks, apparently, which is crazy. Um, and though monkeypox appears to be less fatal, though it has killed somebody already, you know, the, the symptoms are far more visual and visceral. Um, you get pustules um, all over your body at the point of contact or wherever and these pustules can appear anywhere they can appear on your face they can appear in your leg they can appear in your ass they can appear in your esophagus you know what i'm saying like they can appear anywhere and they're really painful and you know you just go through all kinds of agonizing ass pain when you uh have to deal with them and so you get really disfigured, and it's not little, small, little pustules or whatever. Like, it ain't no small pimples. These are large-ass bumps. 
filled with pus and scabs that appear all over your body. So you get like disfigured. And then they kind of appear. And then they kind of go away and then they come back. You know what I'm saying? Now at first the narrative was this was a disease that was primarily impacting gay and bisexual men. So it was almost, you know, typecast in the way that AIDS was. But now we're discovering, no, you can get this shit by touching people. This is not a gay disease. You know what I'm saying? And, uh... So, with the dual-headed dragon of COVID and monkeypox out there... These motherfuckers have the audacity to gather every goddamn math teacher in the goddamn county and have them all go to one place, one high school? But they split us up into two groups. I don't give a damn. That's still thousands of people located in one spot. Like, that don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? And so, first thing I'm doing is like, uh, do I have to go to this shit? You know, so I'm looking around the information concerning contact day, and I find out that there is a backup for if you can't make it to contact day. And uh, I said, I'm going to do that, because... I'm not going to show up in a place with thousands and thousands of people close in proximity to each other. And they're, I'm not around them all the time and all that kind of stuff. Like, I'm, I mean, I got a lot of friends, I'm sure, that were there. But uh, we can establish contact through digital means. I do not have to see you in real life right now. So that was one of the things that I saw and that I was like, hell no, these motherfuckers tripping. But the main sour spot that I've had thus far, well, should I get it or should I see? Nah, fuck it, I'm going in. So yeah, uh, the main sour spot I've had so far in the reason for the season of this video so to speak is now we have a new set of standards and so for those of you that don't know teachers do not decide what the hell they teach they don't look at the class figure out what the class is into and then teach the subject according to the needs of the students oh no that would be that would, that would make too much sense. No, um, what we we have a predetermined curriculum, and that curriculum is determined by a set of benchmarks known as standards. And you know, since I've been in education, we went from the Sunshine State standards to the new Sunshine State standards. To Common Core, and now we have officially exited Common Core, and we're now using the BEST standards, also known as the BEST standards. Um, how best they are remains to be seen, seeing as how these new ones have literally never been implemented before. Now, I think it's you know, more than a far cry to proclaim them to be best, but best is an acronym for some shit I forgot. But anyway, uh, so these best standards are in place now. We are not using Common Core, and that was purely a political move. So, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, Common Core was a set of standards that were adopted in multiple states you know on upon their own volition because somebody had the the cogent idea that perhaps 
kids in one state should be learning the same stuff as kids in other states. There shouldn't be different definitions of nouns. Or for what a noun is, depending on the state that you live in. And and truthfully, that's that's how it actually is. Because when I lived in New York, a noun was simply a person, place, or thing. So there were three parameters as to what a noun was. But then, when I came down to Florida, I learned that a noun was a person, place, thing, or idea. So in other words, ideas are nouns. And to me, that's the most laughable shit of all life. Like, how does an idea become a noun? An idea is just an idea. Anyways. But, you see how that disparity can come into play? Because if a Florida, uh, a, a native Floridian kid moves up to New York and tries to tell a teacher, hey, this is what a noun is, the kid's gonna laugh at him. I mean, like, what the hell are you talking about, country bumpkin? An idea is not a noun. But that's what the Florida kid was taught. But kids in New York don't learn that. That's not what they learn. And so, now you have this conflict of who's right and all that type of shit. And it shouldn't be that way. And so, Common Core seek to eliminate that by having, you know, a, a, a national set of standards. And that idea was very good. But here's the thing with Common Core. Common Core was unpopular with parents because at least for the, the most controversial part of Common Core was, well, A, it came from, well, it didn't even come from Obama. It was just endorsed by President Obama. And because he was a pariah to all right-wingers, anything associated with him neg automatically got negative press no matter how good or beneficial it was you know so that's one of the things it was associated with President Obama but two more notably um, in the elementary school level there were parents that showed quote unquote common core assignments where kids were learning math in, in seemingly convoluted ways. Like, instead of, like, if a kid was, you know, doing multiplication problems and did 7 times 8, instead of the assignment having the kid tell the teacher simply what 7 times 8 was, the assignment would try to get the student to discover what 7 times 8 was by doing these, you know, groupings and stuff like that, and all that kind of stuff. But because the assignments appeared more convoluted, and, you know, the kids weren't just memorizing times tables or whatever, parents got really frustrated and they went online and they said look at this common core math and look at what it's doing to our kids it's indoctrinating them blah 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 it was od and it was mostly white parents white republican parents that were complaining about this shit and thus they got the idea that common core was telling teachers how to do common core math or trying to well they got the idea that it was making their children do a different kind of math a common core math that wasn't the same as easy regular math and that thus it's trying to indoctrinate their children and all that kind of stuff like the ideas that these people had was wacky as fuck but they stuck though you know what i'm saying um and so common core was unpopular here for that reason. Therefore, when Governor Ron DeSantis uh, said, hey, I'm gonna remove Common Core from our schools, that was enough to make a whole bunch of parents happy. And so he did. He removed Common Core from schools and replaced them with these quote-unquote best standards. Here's the problem, though. 
the real problem with Common Core was never the homework assignments or the quote unquote Common Core math versus the new math or, or old math or anything like that. Common Core didn't tell people, it didn't tell teachers a specific way to teach math. It never did. That's evident in the damn standards. And you could go and look at the elementary school standards and you could see it did not tell people how to teach math. Because as I said, the standards are literally just the benchmarks for what you're supposed to teach. It doesn't tell you how you're supposed to teach it. It doesn't say what method you're supposed to use for the most part. Unless it's like systems of equations where you got to use elimination, substitution, and graphing or whatever. But, you know, it never said that you couldn't teach your children matrices or whatever the hell. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, maybe you don't. Anyway, point is, it does not tell teachers how to teach math. It does not mandate or regulate how teachers do a goddamn thing. Those were individual teacher decisions. And so, they want to blame Common Core because it comes from Obama. And so people were so happy to get rid of Common Core, they didn't bother to think, well, what's it being replaced with, and how do I know that it's not as convoluted, if not more so, than the previous standards? Nobody thought that far ahead. Here's the other thing. The real problem with Common Core was the incessant testing. The state testing is the biggest problem in education today bar none because in case you don't know ever since the 90s you know students have been subject to large high stakes standardized tests for you know all kinds of different purposes the idea is the tests are supposed to measure how well they can They've mastered basic skills in math, reading, and all that type of shit. But in practice, the questions on these standardized tests are convoluted as shit. They don't really assess students' basic knowledge, knowledge because these are not basic questions. You know, a good example of a standardized test done right is the ACT. The ACT is a standardized test that students have been receiving for decades. And it's literally used to measure how well a student is ready for college. And, uh, many of the questions are easy, but some are challenging, and, and some, you know, many of them are multidisciplinary. So, you might have an Algebra 2 question that involves a geometry concept. And so you have to blend concepts from different classes together on the math side. That's a good standardized test. You know, it's not pass or fail. You get a, a number, two-digit score for a number. And though you know, there's a certain pass or fail threshold. Um, it's not like the test is like super dummy hard. And if you go and practice the test and you study for it and you prepare for it properly, you can definitely improve your score. That's not the case with these standardized tests. These tests are intentionally written in a convoluted manner. And on the math side, that means having these extraneous word problems that, you know, they, they're, they're related to whatever the topic is, but they're not basic questions. You know, in, like if the question's about equations, instead of you... You know, the question literally asking the kid, hey, solve for X. 
it'll sit there and have some damn motherfucking word problem. And then it'll say that something, something, something in the word problem is represented by the equation uh, blah, 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 blah. What is the solution to the, you know, how many blah, 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 blah. They'll ask these convoluted questions that students have a difficult time interpreting what the fuck they supposed to do. So instead of the student being focused on, okay, what math do I have to do here? Oh, this looks like out this looks like equations. I think I can do that. Now the kids are stuck simply trying to decipher what the damn question says. And so instead of them having to worry about one thing, they have to worry about two things. Now, I'm talking about old standardized tests like what was known as the FCAT. The FCAT was at least offered on paper and it comprised of multiple choice and some free response. And you could use a calculator. But they got rid of the FCAT a long time ago and replaced it with the FSA. And what's known as the EOC. I told you education had mad motherfucking acronyms for no reason. But point is, these tests do not measure students' abilities to uh, demonstrate basic proficiency. The only thing these tests measure is their ability to take this goddamn test. That's all that they measure. And the way I know that is by comparing the scores of students who took the test. I'll have students who got A's in my class all fucking year long. Kids that were teaching everybody else how to, to you know, do the math problems in my class. They would get hundreds or A's on every quiz I gave them. Right? They go and take this big standardized test and they get the same score as somebody that didn't pay no goddamn attention. Worse yet, students that did worse in the class would wind up getting better scores than them! <laughs> that doesn't make sense! That should not happen! If you pay attention in class and you know math, you should be able to pass any motherfucking standardized test you're given that has math in it. If you're strong at algebra, and you're decent in geometry, and you pay attention to somebody like me as your teacher, or any teacher, doesn't matter. As a student, you should have no worries of failing a damn high-stakes math test. But because of the way these tests are written, they do fail. They do fail because they have to translate what the hell the question's asking them to do. They have to guess what this question is asking of them. And then what's worse is, instead of the, the question types being just either multiple choice or free response, now you have drag and drop, you have fill in the blank, you have uh, all kinds of dumbass shit. And it's not on on paper, it's on computer, so the kids get tired from staring at that damn screen for 90 minutes. It's aggravating as hell. You know. So... The standardized testing is the real demon behind Common Core. It was never about the standards themselves. The standards were perfectly fine, as far as I was concerned. But they changed them anyway. They overhauled the standards. And Governor DeSantis, in his infinite wisdom, instead of having the kids take one big 
standardized tests at the end of the year, he turned one standardized test into three. Because now we're doing quote unquote progress monitoring. Which means, you know, have the kids take a test on half of the material that they learned so far on the computer, then have them take another computer test on the other half of material that they learned. So that's two tests. And then let the third one have everything on it, I guess. And then let that shit count for real. So it's he tripled the amount of testing. And he didn't get rid of the high stakes test. Some of the previous high stakes tests that were there under Common Core are still there. Like those EOCs that I mentioned. They didn't go away. They did not go away. And, uh... It's wild. It is wild, wild, wild. And so, the issue at play is... Not only do we have these damn standards, and they're all new, um, that alone is an adjustment by itself. You know, you, you've been working with the, the Common Core standards for years and years now and all that shit. You done got used to them. You know what they say. You know what you're asked to do. You develop a comfort level in it. And here's the thing, you know, when those standards were first ushered in, we were told that, hey, this is the reason why these standards are so great, because of blah, 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 blah. These PDs out here singing the praises of these standards. And now these standards are so bad that we have to get rid of them. You know? Um... And now they're singing the praises of these quote-unquote best standards and even have the nerve to say that these are the best standards. Like, we don't even know that. We really don't even know how good these shits is. And now that I've seen a little bit of these standards, um, in a lot of ways they're worse than what Common Core was doing. The pacing is much worse. Much, 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 much worse. So pacing refers to how much material students have to learn in a given amount of time. And more or less, these standards are asking students to make lasagna without first checking to see if they know if they have pasta if they have sauce, if they have cheese, if they have meat, if they have a pan or a fucking kitchen to b make it in, you know? The standards be like, hey, uh, have students prove theorems about parallel lines and perpendicular lines and all this kind of stuff. Okay. Well, in order for that to happen, they have to know properties of lines. They have to know how to draw a line, how to name a line. And they have to know how to do two column proofs or, you know, whatever type of proof. And, you know, that in of itself is not an issue, but you know how long we have to teach them that shit? A week. A literal motherfucking week. We have from August 10th to August 17th to teach that standard. That lasagna standard. And the reasons the, the damn uh, curriculum map cites is, well, in 8th grade and 3rd grade, kids already learned about blah, 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 blah. Bitch, no, they did not. This did not happen. We literally just implemented these standards this goddamn year. Last year, we were doing Common Core. 
they didn't do a goddamn thing in grade eight. And certainly not in third grade. And even if they had, I don't teach ninth graders, bitch. I teach 11th graders and 12th graders. Maybe a couple sophomores, but I got 11th and 12th grades. They did not use these standards at all. So these standards are baked or half baked because they're running off of the assumption that the kids have prior knowledge that they never previously got. In third grade, they learned about reads and, and lines and shit. No, they did not. They did not. They did no such thing. Uh, shit. I got this call. Hey, babe, can I call you back? Yeah, I'm up here recording this video and shit. I know, sorry. Yeah. I know, I know. But I gotta get this video out. Trying to record this phone and shit. Okay. I love you. But yeah. So. Even if students actually had learned these things, it's too motherfucking soon for kids to be learning this thing. Literally, one of the standards said in third grade, students learned about lines, rays, line segments, parallel lines, perpendicular lines. I'm like, in third grade they learned this? Third grade! third grade do you know what i did in third grade this math major person you know what i was doing in third grade times tables that's what we did we did not learn about angles we did not learn about parallel perpendicular lines or shapes of any kind like that we did not do those things we learned times tables and guess what? I learned my times tables. I did. I don't stammer when people ask me what 7 times 8 is. I don't even hesitate. But because these kids have been asked to learn things so goddamn fast and so soon, they're not even being they're not even making sure that they actually learn the shit. And what's worse is, we get into these professional developments in which non-math teachers tell us, math teachers, that we're being negative if we talk about what the kids aren't able to do. If we just hold them to high standards and have high expectations of them, they'll rise up to meet them. Bitch, you can't rise up to nothing if you don't have something to stand on, nigga! How you gonna rise up and you ain't got nothing underneath you? You don't have a ground underneath you, you ain't got a stool, a step ladder, no nothing. You got water underneath you. You don't have no solid foundation. How you supposed to rise from that? You have a bunch of third graders that were taught about lines and angles and shit and, and, and parallel perpendicular lines, but they don't know their times tables. The fuck? The times table knowledge will hurt them for the rest of their math life. The lack of mastery of times tables will kill them for the rest of their math career! They can learn about lines and shit later! Once they have the foundation shit! When they have the fundamentals, then they can learn about the other stuff, the advanced stuff. You don't try to give them a little bit of the advanced stuff early on. 
and hope that because they've been exposed to it, that they remember the shit and have mastery over it, that shit doesn't work. It's like these niggas never taught teenagers before. Them niggas don't even remember what they ate for breakfast. You think they gonna remember? <laughs> Here's the thing. It ain't like they don't remember anything at all. Like, they remember being exposed to some shit. It might be familiar to them, but they can't explain it. They can't teach nobody about it. So if you can't explain what you've been taught, then obviously you didn't retain it. So what was the point of exposing it to them then, if they don't even remember the shit after less than a year? Ain't no goddamn purpose. Stupid. Jesus. I'm sorry, y'all. I know I kind of went into rant mode a little bit. But I'm just trying to give y'all a peek into what a nigga's been going through as of late with this school shit. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't just me. Every math teacher in the goddamn state of Florida has had this exact same problem for years. They've had this exact same problem. Every math teacher, the ones that care, and the ones that are not fucking shills of the district or the county or whatever, they know what the problem is. All of them would say the exact same thing that I'm saying. But given the fact that I've been at this teaching thing for 11 years, this is my 10th year in public school education in this state and in this district. I've learned a couple things. I've helped thousands of people, not just students, not just high school level. I've helped, you know, many grown ass adults, people double and possibly, well, not triple. I, I ain't helped nobody triple my age. But people that are were old enough to be my mom and possibly grandmother. I've helped people my age. I've helped people younger than me, slightly younger. I've helped children, teenagers, all that shit. And so my observations of where they struggle, you know, they're not based on you know, just my single story. They're based on all the stories of these people. What I have noticed is people only really struggle in math when they don't understand arithmetic. What is arithmetic? Arithmetic is addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. That's it. If you are able to fluently add, subtract, multiply, and divide whole numbers, and when I say whole numbers, I mean both positive and negative, fractions, and decimals, if you can do arithmetic on those three sets of numbers, you can learn any math that high school has to offer you. You can learn it, and you can be proficient at it. You might even goddamn like it. I have demonstrated this principle over and 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 over again. You know. So a lot of what I do when I help people is the first thing I do is I assess how well they know arithmetic. What I find is the people that have a solid grasp on arithmetic, once I establish that they have that, all I have to do is then give them the, the specific subject area knowledge. So say for instance, I'm working with an adult, somebody that's been out of school for a while. You know, they only learned up to algebra one in high school, which was, you know, apparently a prevalent thing. like. You know, my mom graduated high school in 1983. As a senior in math class, she took Algebra 1. She never even took Geometry, let alone anything after those two things. 
fast forward to me, I took Algebra 1 for the first time in 8th grade. So before I even got into high school, I had taken the same class that my mother took as a high school senior. That's just one example of the kind of acceleration that has happened over the years in the school system. So the same thing that we used to ask seniors to do, now we're saying middle school children are going to do it. And we're wondering why perhaps those same middle school children can't multiply as well as their older counterparts were able to. Anyway, so as I was saying, um, if I'm helping an adult student and I see that, you know, they can already multiply and divide and all that stuff without struggling, then all I got to do is be like, okay, well, this is how you do an equation. This is a one-step equation. This is a multi-step equation. It's arithmetic. And once I make that connection, it's like, oh, that's all it is? Arithmetic? Yes. The same thing you already demonstrated you know how to do. And then I show them the steps. I let them practice the shit. You know, I gradually increase the difficulty, but, you know, you get the idea. It's based on stuff they already know. They've already demonstrated mastery of arithmetic. So once they already know that, there's no holes in their knowledge base. They have a solid foundation. We can build from that easily. And we do. That's easy. That's light work for me. But I've done this mad times with many, many adults. What's more difficult is when you're trying to teach a child a subject area thing. Maybe it's also equations, you know, how to solve multi-step equations. But I come to find out they only know their timetables up to the sixes. That's going to be very problematic. Because now, when they're solving equations and you have six parentheses x minus 9 equals 52 when they have to distribute the damn 6 to the x and the 9 they're struggling to figure out what 9 times 6 is this impedes their ability to be successful it seriously does or when I have to you know teach those same children how to you know, solve polynomial equations. One good way of solving a polynomial equation is by factoring. But what do you have to know how to do in order to factor? You gotta know how to multiply. You gotta know your time tables. Because if you have the equation x squared minus 3x minus 54 equals zero, that equation's mad easy to solve. Because what happens is, in order to solve a quadratic equation, you got to figure out the factors of that last term, a.k.a. the 54, that would either add or subtract to give you the coefficient of that middle term, the negative 3. Well, 54 is 9 times 6. And then 6 minus 9 is negative 3. I don't have no paper in front of me. I'm able to just make that up. You see what I'm saying? Because I can multiply, I can make up equations to give to students and to talk with you all. But the student that doesn't know that 54 is 9 times 6, they're going to struggle to solve that equation. They're going to struggle now because instead of easily being able to come up with the factors of 54, now they're going to try to grab a calculator. But if they're in a class where they can't use a calculator, like mine, or if they're on a test where they can't use a calculator, like day one of the EOCs, 
now they don't know what the factors of 54 are. They gotta count it out with sticks. Literally. I've seen kids draw little motherfucking tick marks and shit. Trying to multiply. They don't know what 7 times 8 is, but they know what 8 times 4 is, and so they're gonna add 8 little more sticks to do 8 times 5, and they keep doing this until they get to 8 times 7. That's a goddamn travesty. And they're in 11th grade. These are the same kids who were allegedly exposed to geometric, you know, shapes and lines and shit in the third grade, but they can't multiply. And you wonder why they struggle on standardized tests. But then now you tell me, as a teacher, I have seven days to teach these children how to make lasagna. And when I say lasagna, I mean, uh, use a, 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 they have seven days to make something or to show that they can do something that requires multiple pieces of prior knowledge that they don't have. They may or may not have. You see what I'm saying? The same way lasagna requires that you have several ingredients that you might not, may or may not have at home. Because if you try to make a lasagna without, you know, the sauce, it ain't going to be lasagna. It'll be something, but not lasagna. Let your ass try to make lasagna without the pasta. It'll be something, but it won't be lasagna. You see what I'm saying? And so, you know, I'm just trying to give motherfuckers an insight as to how this stuff is. Like, what these teachers be going through here. I mean, it's going on nationwide, but especially here in Florida, it's real, dog. It's real as hell. Because this state don't give a fuck about its students or its teachers. We get paid terribly. Um, the kids always have to be subject to some new shit that they gotta learn or do every year that the state then subsequently drops because they finally realize it was trash the whole time, even though we could have told them that in the first 45 minutes of introducing the shit. You know, we don't have a lot of resources. The state does not spend enough money on education at all. You know what I'm saying? And whatever they do spend on education is spent on testing software so that the kids can do more standardized tests than they freaking need to. And it ain't like the standardized tests just take a day. I mean, you talking about these kids are doing some kind of testing 90 days of the year. School year only at lasts 180 days. So they spend more than half of the year testing. Doing retakes from previous years and all this type of mess or, or, or doing a makeup tests when they missed a day of standardized testing like it's ridiculous Could you die less easily? but you know they say that these are the best standards and all that good jazz but there ain't no damn resources so I've had to you know, pull from my own previous assignments that were for another set of standards in order to assign my kids some goddamn practice because there's no current resources, enough resources for practice. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I mean... It would be different if I came in from school, seen that they had the, they already had these new standards. You know, the textbooks are already there. You have plenty of practice problems to choose from, like mad sheets and sheets and sheets and PDF files of practice problems to pick from. You know what I'm saying?
in order to assign to the kids, but that's not what we have. I'm about to run this back because I think this was the last match. Of the no, it wasn't. Never mind. But, uh, well, hell, I'm finna run it back anyway. Yes, yes, yes. But, yeah, I mean, if they were telling me that, hey, you have this whole thousands of questions test bank of, of questions or, or database of questions per chapter to choose from you know in case the kids don't understand you know the first time you teach it and they had complete maps and and the the curriculum maps were were adequately paced to the speed at which students actually learn things then I wouldn't be so mad. But they don't. They think you're going to be able to teach kids that are brand new. Some of them have never seen or never learned any real geometric terminology. You think they're going to learn how to do proofs in a week? They can't even learn segment and angle addition postulate in a week. They can't. I've tried it. It don't work that way. Some of them can do it because they can do algebra. But considering that the majority of students in geometry did not pass the Algebra 1 EOC, which was the standardized test that you're supposed to administer. Uh, but they're placed in geometry anyway. That means that they don't even have the algebra fundamentals. And there's a lot of algebra in geometry. So, you're, this standardized test that you say is mad important, and you says you say that it assesses a kid's ability to to have basic proficiency in the topic according to your own metrics most of 80 percent of your students of students wind up failing this damn standardized test 80 percent of students that take the algebra one eoc fail it according to their own data right so why are my geometry classes filled up with level 1 and level 2 algebra EOC takers? Why are there any kids in my geometry class at all that failed the algebra 1 EOC? Why are they there? Your metric said that they don't have algebra 1 fundamental skills. So why are they in geometry, nigga? Why are they there? They don't belong in that class, according to your own metric, but you put them there anyway. Or you let schools put them in those classes anyway. And then you wonder why I can't keep pace with this ridiculous curriculum map that you say I should be able to keep pace with. You say they should be able to make a lasagna in a week without necessarily knowing if they have all the damn components. You won't even give me children that you know have all the components. According to your data, I should only have kids that scored level 3 or higher. Y'all following me here? Lord. Round two. Mm. This shit gets on my nerves. You can tell. And it's not because I disdain the kids. No, I love the kids. The kids are the reason why I do this still. If I had a shitty relationship with the kids or I didn't care about the kids, I'd have been gone out of this damn industry, out of this line of work because, you know, it ain't worth it otherwise. 
You don't barely get paid. You don't get respected within your organization or within your, your industry or beyond it. You know what I'm saying? The only way to make money is to step out of the damn classroom. But being in the classroom is the reason why we came into this damn shit to begin with. <laughs> if you stay in that classroom, you not gonna make no bread. You are not making six figures being in that goddamn classroom. You're gonna be able to make just enough to afford an apartment on your own. That is how much you will make. The figures vary from county to county, but the, the, the lifestyle is basically the same. But this is why teachers deserve a lot of appreciation, particularly the ones that give a fuck, like the ones that really enjoy teaching children. Them niggas should get all kinds of discounts, all kinds of loan forgiveness, and all that shit. Because we go through hell. We are asked to be superheroes in this bitch. And, uh... Them motherfuckers tripping. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And here's the thing. If I tell this to my administration majority of whom are made up of people who don't teach math, never taught math, and aren't very good at math, they're not going to know what the fuck I'm talking about. They're not going to understand why I'm ranting and raving the way that I am. Why am I so upset? They don't get it. They would never get it. They would not get it. And I know this because I tried it. Last year, I was, you know, put on some sort of a probation kind of thing because they didn't like the way my lesson plans looked. And they didn't like the pace at which I was teaching the students. I was teaching... They were trying to say that I weren't, I wasn't teaching the kids according to the standards, to the full depth of the standard. I'm like, I'm teaching them the standards, but I'm making sure that they have all the pieces, all the components before they're asked to make the goddamn lasagnas. But because I was, you know, far behind the curriculum map, I was put on this probation thing and I had to make these lesson plans that would allegedly get the kids caught up to where they were supposed to be according to the curriculum map and all that kind of stuff. It was a lot. It was aggravating. It was humiliating. And it really just let me know that uh, even though I impact all these damn lives, you know, I'm one of them teachers that be the only reason why kids come to school, certain kids come to school. I'm the one that makes math fun. I'm the guy that... I'm the one that, that gets the bad kids to do work. The quote-unquote bad kids. Like, other teachers be complaining about certain kids, and I'm like, shit, he's, he's a terrific student. They're like, what? You get them to do work? Yeah, because I treat them with decency. <laughs> I'm not white. I don't... <laughs> I understand what these kids be talking about. You know what I mean? I'm a part of their world, and I, I, I learn what the hell they be talking about. And I treat them with decency, and I explain my stuff. I actually teach them. I do my job. Go figure. So I'm that person. You know, I'm not just some person that just be like, hair. Hey, read this packet, get out of my face, but I'm not that, I'm not that teacher, I'm the one that be really 
going in, helping the kids, explaining stuff to them, teaching, reteaching, answering all kind of questions. Like, I'm that person. And don't none of that shit mean nothing to y'all. Because y'all can just put me on probation and say that I'm not teaching to the standard. When I know what these kids need more than y'all motherfuckers do and the district do. Because I'm there with them. I know where they struggle. But you won't say I'm not teaching to the standards. Okay, bitch. Okay, bitch. You know what I'm saying? So, when I seen that happen, it just lets me know, it let me know that I can be disposable. I am replaceable. If I get in too much trouble, or the district comes down and they don't like what the fuck I'm doing in my classroom, the niggas at my school gonna hang me out to dry. The adult niggas I'm talking about. The administration niggas I'm talking about. They'll hang me out to dry because they don't know what the fuck I'm doing no way. Because they ain't math people. They'll try to oust me and find some other motherfucker. Okay. Final round, fight. So I know y'all ain't got my back. I know that if I'm struggling, I'm gonna have to struggle in silence. And figure this shit out. And, and not draw any attention to myself. Because if I do, them niggas gonna be all on me. Fuck them. No. I might have to start doing what these other teachers be doing. Some of them put on straight up dog and pony shows and they be lying about what they teach and where they are and all that type of shit. I might have to start doing that dumb shit. But it's not in me to be deceptive like that. That's fucked up. I don't know, y'all. Is this the last video? The last match? No, it's not. Okay, good. I got more time. Yeah, uh, you know. This is crazy. And the year ain't even began yet. But here's the thing. Everything's not all doom and gloom. Like I say, the very best part of this job are those kids. The kids are the main reason why I'm there. The only reason why I'm there. My allegiance is to them. Not to the school. Not to the district. Not to the curriculum. None of them motherfuckers. I have no allegiance to these adults. I got cool. I got some cool ass co-workers. I'm cool with them. them they, they my peoples and shit. But my allegiance is to them children. That's why I'm there. You know. So, today, I spent a lot of my time decorating my room. And how did I decorate my room? I put my students' art all over the wall. All over the wall. So now my walls are inundated with student art collected over my, you know, 10 years of public school. And, uh, it was really nice seeing all those old pictures and stuff like that that the kids did for me. I mean, some of that stuff is from 2014. So, the kids make it worth it, though. They really do make it worth it. But, uh, otherwise, these motherfuckers 